Hey YouTube, welcome to the outside of the RV and April Crosley with what I call Florida hair. I am currently traveling the United States in my RV with my husband and but I'm originally from Pennsylvania and that is where we flip houses, buy small multifamily rentals and do a little bit of private lending. And if you don't understand what Florida hair is, it's obviously just a lot bigger because it is really, really hot here. Really, really hot. But anyway, I have a great video for you today. I'm actually answering a question from someone that emailed me. If you have questions, you can email us april at lazygirlrei.com. And the question was, how are you self-managing your rentals from far away while you travel around the United States? Because lots of people ask me if I have a property management company. And my answer is, no, and it's not that I'm proud of that, not having a property management company, because trust me, I would rather have one, but I've tried a few. I've yet to find a competent one in my area that I trust, and the last one I hired actually stole thousands of dollars from me and then fled Pennsylvania to another state. So I self-manage my own properties from afar. It's part of the reason I'm looking to buy larger multifamily apartment buildings, mobile home parks, and storage space so that I can hire competent, qualified, higher level property management companies that manage larger buildings. So I'm going to tell you how I'm currently managing from afar, and I'd love to hear how you do it if you're self-managing, because there's lots of different ways, and I love swapping tips and advice and tricks in the business to with other real estate investors. So currently we are holding, or we were holding around 40 units, but we've been selling off a lot of property over the past few years, um, mostly because the market's so hot. So if you've been watching my videos, you know we've been selling mostly single families. Um, so we're currently holding some small multi-units. So this is my process from A to Z when I have a vacancy, okay? Here goes. Number one, we advertise the property on Zillow, but caveat, I don't take any phone calls, okay? So I put in my Zillow description that due to the volume of inquiries we receive, no phone calls will be returned. Email inquiries only. The reason I do that is because all of our residents pay rent online and they communicate all their maintenance requests online, which you're gonna get in a second, and no one is to call me unless it's except for an emergency because getting phone calls is very disruptive to my life and I'm busy and I have other things going on, so I don't want phone calls and texts about random things. If they send me a maintenance request, I can just see it in my email inbox when I choose to go look at my email. So in my Zillow ad, I never put my phone number and I always put, because sometimes they'll Google me and find my phone number, that no phone calls will be returned, email inquiries only. So we're basically setting the stage for them using an online email system from the beginning. Now I do like to advertise on Zillow, but I can tell you that lately, Facebook Marketplace has been performing really well for us. So you could do both or one or, doesn't really matter. Zillow's kind of still my go-to, but Facebook Marketplace has been working well. So that's where we start with advertising. Once somebody emails us, then I have an agent that is my boots on the ground agent in the area that rents the units for me. So he fills my vacant units. So everyone that emails, I forward their email to that agent, which honestly, I could cut out another step and just have him do it from his Zillow account or give him access to my Zillow account so I wouldn't even have to be forwarding emails. I really need to improve that. I'm gonna do that after I hang up from this video. <laughs> so I send the emails to him, then he reaches out to the people that inquire and he says, hey, we're holding an open house. Now we'll hold open houses usually twice a week, like on a Sunday from three to four, we only do it for one hour, or on a Tuesday from like noon to one, please wear a mask when you come to the open house, because you know, surveys the virus. So we have them, come to an open house, walk through the unit, and then we can give them an application on site or we just give them a business card and tell them to inquire for an application. Applications are only returned, you got it, via email. So we're, again, we're setting them up for the whole online thing. So when they fill out the application, if they can't come to the open house, we say, I'm sorry, if it doesn't get rented, we'll let you know, and then we'll schedule another open house and keep you updated when that open house is, but we're trying to get everyone to the first few open houses. 
And let's be honest, rentals are far and few between right now. So if they're not making it to that first or second open house, it's typically got rented by them. So when they return their application, a lot of people don't have a scanner and they're like, I can't scan email it. So I tell them about Genius Scan, which is an app on their phone that they can download and it literally scans the application from your phone and they can email it to me. So they actually don't send it to me. They send it to the agent. He reviews the application. We make sure income's three times the rent. Um, we make sure they have a steady job history and that's what our pre-screen is. So if we pre-screen them, we're like, okay, they make three times the rent. They have a great job history. Now we're gonna send them for a credit background and eviction check. We don't take an application fee when they send us the application. Now, when we, before we do the credit background and eviction check, we say, hey, you've passed the initial phase of the application process. The next step is a credit background and eviction check. It costs $40 per person. And every adult that's living in the apartment has to do this check. Our credit background and eviction check come from mysmartmove.com, mysmartmove.com, okay? The reason I like it is because it verifies their identity. There's other sites you can do it through. We just have always used My Smart Move, so I'd love to hear who you use and why. You can drop it in the comments below. But we go to mysmartmove.com. We send them a link. It verifies their identity. It checks their credit background eviction, sends the results back to the agent. If it all looks good, he then types up an application or a lease. I have a standard lease that I use. So he fills out the standard lease, uploads it to DocuSign, DocuSigns it to me, DocuSigns it to the future tenant. Again, setting them up for doing everything online. And then once we have their lease signed, we upload their application and their lease and um, inform their information, contact information into what's called Cozy, cozy.co. This is how we collect our rent. It's an online rent payment system, and it's also how we get maintenance requests. So we put everything in Cozy. They can link their bank account to Cozy, so they can pay 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have no grace period in our lease because they can pay any time. They can also set up auto withdrawal. So I do have some elderly tenants that aren't online savvy. So what we'll do is we will actually meet with them in person. We'll take a laptop or an iPad. We sit down with them or them and a family member and we create an email account for them and with their family member. And then what we do is we put that email into Cozy and we get them set up on auto pay so that they don't have to go into Cozy every week and send the rent payment. It just automatically comes out every week. So my smart move for credit background eviction, Cozy.co for all their online rent payment, and then all their maintenance requests are sent through Cozy. I then have a regular maintenance guy who, I don't know what I would do without him, to be honest with you. He goes around to all my buildings and checks on everything. When apartment turns need to be done, he goes there and checks on them for me. So if you're catching on the keys to having good boots on the ground, great agent, great maintenance person. And my maintenance person will let me know if I need a plumber, an HVAC guy. He's my first call if anything's going wrong with a building. I send my maintenance guy out. He keeps in touch with me. And then once a year, yes, even while I'm traveling, I will go back once a year. And once a year, we walk through every single unit that we own and we make a list of repairs that need to be done inside the unit or on the outside of the building because some residents won't call you if something goes wrong. And that's just because they're used to like being yelled at by a former landlord or something and they don't want to be a bother. But we really try to tell them like, call us no matter how small the problem seems to be and we'll get it fixed for you. So. We still walk through once a year at least just to make sure that everything is okay with the unit and everything is okay with the building and then make a list of things that need to be done. So I think that's it. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Once someone decides that they're moving out of the building or they give me notice that they're moving out, which is really pretty rare. We don't have a lot of turnover because we keep our apartments nice and our rent's just under market, so that, that's one of our tactics we use to keep things rented um, with very little turnover because they can't find a better place in that price point. So once someone does move out, my handyman goes in, lets me know what needs to be done to the apartment, and I send him in and whatever other contractors I need to, like carpet, um, HVAC, whatever, 
to help turn the apartment over. And then I send a cleaning crew in and then my agent goes out, hangs a lockbox on the apartment door with a key, advertises on Zillow and the process starts all over again. So that's what we're using right now to self-manage our units while we're on the road. I would love to hear what's working for you guys. Drop me a comment below. You can follow us for more great information on Instagram at April Crosley, on Facebook at Lazy Girl Real Estate Investing. You can also check us out at www.lazygirlrei.com. Thanks guys. Have a great day.